Welcome to Money on Tap. Money on Tap, your personal finance headquarters, where we bring out the professionals' experience and some fun in what we call three-dimensional investing, utilizing insurance, brokerage, and fee-based planning. That's what we do on this show. We look at all sides of the issues, and we bring a fully independent planning perspective to the table. Welcome back. You are listening to Money on Tap. You can reach us at 855-226-8551 or info at yourmoneyontap.com. Tom, so good to have you here with us today. My name is Seth Crossman with Ben Brayshaw and Dan Mickelin again. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing well, Seth. I'm, I'm doing well, Dan. You look well. I am. I'm feeling good. You know, finally, kind of that winter spare. We got a bunch of snow, so it's um, it's feeling like New England again. You know, no more of these sixty degree sixty degree December January days. But um, yeah, th- I think. It's feeling timely, and this show's timely for you know the other season we're about to enter. You know, it's the kind of the, the back-to-back. You get winter and then tax season, and here we go. Yeah, it's like, I was going to say it. It does look like you have some snow there behind you, Dan. How much do you guys? Have, how much you guys get? Uh, we this is the third and then probably the last week and a half. But uh, this was just a little dusting. Not not too bad. Yeah, well, we got about two inches here, and it shut down uh, pretty much the entire state of Oregon and Washington for about a week. <laughs> I thought you guys can handle snow will, up there. Yeah, it did turn into a bit of an ice storm, and you know, power outages and all that stuff. So it was a little more than a couple inches of snow, and it was. It was actually really, really cold for us here. I mean, we got down to oh, I want to say something like fourteen degrees or something like that, which just never happens for us. So that's exciting. <laughs> well, maybe the downtown streets of Portland will look a little nicer with a little bit of whiteness on it. So I'll tell you something about your street streets there, Benjamin Brayshaw. <laughs> We're going to clean you up here in a minute. Speaking of cleaning up today, wow, do we have a great show ahead for you. We're going to be in the tax time. And guess what happens when you learn more about taxes? Most of the time, you wind up paying less. What? Yes. That's what we're going to be doing today. We're actually going to do... A couple of shows here for you at Money on Tap, um, really to help you get prepared and take some of the sting and the anxiety and, you know what, maybe quite a bit of the work out of doing the taxes uh, that we know, you know what, you probably love doing taxes. I don't want to take that away from you, honestly. If you're one of those people that you're just like, golly, I'm so excited about this time of year. Yes, Seth, Ben, Dan. Tell me more about how we can save some money this year and uh, what we can do in our tax plan. And if, if you're one of those rare few, we're so glad you're here with us. If that's not you, we get it. We get it. We do understand. And one of the things we want to make sure that you have in front of you before the end of this show is an opportunity to connect with us and our tax planning team. That's part of what we offer here at Brayshaw Financial Group is we have some qualified uh, CPAs or tax preparers that work really hard in the background here with our clients to ensure that they're fully aligned in their taxes and their goals with their financial planning. And, um, you know, and that's one of the things that as financial planners, we really, really want to make sure that we're doing with – with your tax preparation team, if that's you know not here at Brayshaw Financial Group, and you're one of our clients, gosh, that's so so pivotal. It's one of the things that we always want to make sure that we're looking through and making sure we understand before we you know do the planning work and start making recommendations of how we can assist in your in your goals. Because um, everything everything is pivoted or goes or passes through that tax code. So. Anyways, with that, we're going to have some fun here at Money on Tap with you today, and that's the topic for you. You know, I I got to tell you, I think taxes are the fundamentally the number one thing that you should address whenever doing an investment first. You know, like, you know, you don't just jump into your investments and all of the different things that you're going to do without understanding the tax code and how it's going to impact you. And if your financial professional is not asking you for your tax return, which is like 
like a number one ask for us. Uh, we, we have a financial questionnaire we ask people to fill out. We ask them to provide their statements and a recent tax return. Um, there's just so much stuff involved that it just, it just becomes unprofessional to not actually engage somebody about their taxes or what's going on in some capacity that's, that makes it relevant that what you're doing is really going to benefit them properly. I mean, they always say there's only two sure things, death and taxes. And so if there's only two sure things, you might as well be as sure about those things as you possibly can. And um, I think that goes both ways. On that. So, you know, making sure you're really, really doing the right thing investment wise first starts with understanding your taxes. Yeah, particularly as people move towards retirement and they're trying to create income and, and draw down certain assets. You know, people have kind of a bad habit if they're, if they're not factoring in the tax consequence, picking the account with the most and spending that first. Or just coming up with some strategy that they've kind of hatched themselves as to, you know, where to, where to tap that income at certain times. And with a, without an eye towards taxes, you can really be very, very inefficient in how you do that. And ultimately, it ends up being wasted money. So um, there's, there's really no reason to do that. Have, have access to a professional you want your financial planner and your tax preparers and professionals to work together to really kind of lead you to the best possible outcome that way. And again, just don't waste any money. I like that. Let's not waste any money. Let's make every one of those hard-earned dollars go to work for us. And um, with that, let's save some money as well as we're in this season. And with that, it is time for us to jump into Money in the News. First article today is coming to us from The Telegraph from Matthew Field. China raising electric car makers amid fears they could flood the West. And this is, this I thought was interesting because we've, we've watched Tesla and, and kind of the, the stock price there as, as a hot stock over the last few years. And as well, we've done a number of articles and it's kind of a thing that we, we read on otherwise um, outside of the show parameters. But kind of the, the back and forth between, you know, the federal government requiring you know, all employees to rent and, and use EVs, even though there's a lack of charging stations. I mean, anecdotally, kind of an offshoot. We just, with all this cold we were talking about before, I, I read an article where they were, these charging stations were failing or running super slow. You know, we, we're going to get into some tax credits related to EVs. So that you have all this governmental push towards the EV space that people just jumped into. And now you've begun to see, just because of the inefficiencies in it all and, and the lack of charging access, kind of a real pullback. I noticed Hertz just sold all of their rental EV fleet, which kind of flooded the used market um, in, in that particular space. And that, that's what this, this article is pointing to, is that amid the price wars between Tesla and, and kind of the offshore providers and manufacturers, you know, particularly this BYD a company out of China that had um, claimed the top spot in EV production for the first time uh, very recently. But now China's concerned that we're flooding the market here. There's just too much product um, between what's going on domestically here in the U.S. and, and the imports of, of foreign providers that their government is, is really taking the reins and in, in reeling back all of their investment, in, well, I shouldn't say all, but significant amounts of their investment into these projects just to make sure that they can sustain the price and not just flood the world market with all of these EVs. This is socialism as its finest, communism, however you want to call it. I mean, just controlling the marketplace is just devastates a lot of businesses across the board and, and stifles a lot of growth. We all know that. So it's it's kind of complicated to really break this down, how this has a global impact. But when you're actually the largest EV provider, you need that quickly, that's a big problem. And I think it's interesting, too, because there's just been so much. I mean, Dan, we, I mean, there's been so many breakdowns. I mean, even up north in the winter storms, they're talking about all the Teslas that were packed into charging stations that couldn't hold the charge because it's too cold. Right. I mean, there's all these tax write-offs for it, so everyone's going for them. But at the same time, it's you need a car that is going to work for you. I mean, we actually have a hybrid, and we went that way because of just that exact reason. I didn't want to have to worry about ever needing to travel. And I, I just don't know. I don't know how you feel about that, but ultimately, I, I don't really care about the EV world from, from that standpoint, other than the fact that government's pushing us in there, and I'm not sure that we're we're ready for that. What do you think? Well, one of the things I thought was fascinating here was right out of the gate, the uh, country's vice minister, I can't even pronounce the name, but the country's vice minister of, Inf of industry and information technology said that they would crack down on disorderly competition among 
the electric vehicle projects from the local governments and new car makers. I had to scratch my head. I was like, wait, there's competition? Like, there's some kind of a free market over there that uh, I was unaware of. I figured it all had to be, you know, from the government. And, you know, I'm a bit ignorant in that. That's fine. I'm not paying that close of attention to, like, the EV market in China today anyways. But uh, it was really kind of funny for me to be for me to hear them just kind of maybe have a bit of an experiment in the uh, free market and say, whoa, 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 whoa. We're, you guys got to rein it in a little bit here because you're just getting a little little over your skis. And, um, you know, with that, I thought I just actually watched an Elon Musk art, um, interview the other day. And, you know, one of the things that he highlights or talks about with Tesla was was how successful Tesla has been without even advertising. And he ties that into some other things that are very interesting as well. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, very interesting as well. But his main point was, you know, there's so many people out there talking a talk about doing good, and they're not. Whereas he's like, this is what I do. And you can go ahead and put my actions up against whatever you want. And that's a little neither here nor there to the article but just an interesting article as well uh and what's going to happen in this space i'd be i would be terrified to own a own one of these cars honestly i just (laughs) i don't know that's why that's my take on it i'm like if i'm going to go into the ev world i want to know that the that what's been produced is here and it's going to work and i've got a place i can take it in case i need it serviced and it's not going to be a problem and with that the um the, the part on the back side of this, as far as the the EV getting the credits and that kind of stuff, is uh, I did like to, I did like seeing that the way that we're going to roll out or make sure that we maintain the EV credits is to make sure that the parts are supported or manufactured here in the states versus offshore in China. Uh, I think that's really critical for us to try to maintain um, the, the integrity of our marketplace here. That's what I had to say about that. I think that's interesting, Seth. I think that's very interesting. And I think the fact that we're actually verbally saying we're not going to allow Chinese batteries into the country, I just think that's pretty aggressive. I don't think that we have have much in the way of supporting that, but we'll see what happens. Um, Stock buybacks could rebound this earnings season. This is by Crystal Herr, CNN Business. And this is really interesting because there's actually, you know, there's been a lot of waves in the the stock market um, and concerns about actual performance and what's going on and crashes and pullbacks and so forth. And this article goes into depth about a number of different companies, specifically a natural gas company, O-N-E-O-K, um, and so forth, looking to buy back $2 billion share repurchase program. Um, and then there's a, there's, um, oh, who is it? Oh, Leonard, which is the home construction firm. They're going to buy back $5 billion. And this is a really great thing. I mean, a lot of people don't think about, sh- you know, share buybacks and how that's actually going to support a stock. But inside all of that, the idea that you know people are you know people want to buy stock that's going up, right? And the only reason stocks go up is because people are buying more and more of these stocks. But when a company starts doing the repurchase, you have this kind of underlying buyback scenario: people buying stocks, but it's actually the company, as well as you know the community around you. It actually tends to allow the stock to go up. But the piece about the stock buybacks that you have to keep in mind is usually the company's buying back the stock because they think it's cheap. And it gives you a good perspective of how a company feels they're looking forward in the in the forward progress. When companies are raising money and selling their stock, that's another question, right? So they're either growing, they're looking to grow. And, and so buybacks are, are happening. That's been interesting because when we actually look at the economy as, as financial planners, as we go through the investments we consider and the wealth management that we do, which we do, you know, we buy stocks and literally trade stocks every day. Um, that comes into play because the overall sentiment of the market is really, really important. And I think this article does a really good job talking about how a number of companies in certain sectors are actually very positive on the market for what their their stock is showing. I think buybacks have been traditionally viewed. You know, we've done we've talked about this in a number of different shows as, as a healthy thing. And you know, because of market conditions and the market being steadfastly down and and high inflation. You know, since 2022, there really hasn't been the story that it was prior to that. So there's this expectation and hope that with interest rates easing, earnings looking pretty good, 
You know, uh, Deutsche Bank has this opinion in particular. They think buybacks could help drive a 78% additional annual return on the S&P 500 this year, which seems like a big number. That's very aggressive to me. But, you know, generally it, it is considered a, a, a harbinger of good news. And you think that the company is in a perspective to have cash on hand to be able to do this and the belief that they're undervalued and, and the stock's likely to rise. So those are good indicators with, you know, true insiders within the company have this outlook. So it's always interesting news to take a look. But when we did a prior show, one word of caution is that, you know, often, you know, CEOs compensation is driven by share price. And, you know, there's some manipulation that potentially takes place there trying to drive up the price to hit a certain metric in their comp package. So, you know, watch out for that. It's not just because a company's buying back doesn't mean you jump all in. But I would say, majority of the time generally positive perspective on a stock and something to you know whenever you hear about it in a particular ticker you know it's worth taking a look at and i think dan just to add to that too because a company could be looking at saying buying back our stock makes more sense because of what we're paying out versus paying off a debt or doing something else it could be a total economic play but it just is that piece that hey we believe in our company you know we're not trying to raise funds out of there yeah, it's interesting. There's actually some ETFs out there um, that have a strategy wrapped around you know buybacks within the industry, and and they've you know measured the statistics around buybacks and what's important inside of those, and and then we'll buy those companies that are going into those buybacks as a part of just that that ETF strategy. So there's you know, quite a bit of information out there around buybacks and also Warren Buffett's a big fan of them as well. And, and, uh, says that basically if you don't understand them, then, well, he has his opinion, but, um, yeah, lots of information out there on these buybacks that if you wanted to dig in, or if you want to give us a call and find out more at 855-226-8551, we'll be happy to help you out here too. Consumer sentiment surges while inflation outlook dips. University of Michigan survey shows Jeff Cox, um, this is from CNBC, The Economy, and uh, it's really interesting that the University of Michigan survey now of consumers showed a reading of 78.8 for January, the highest level since July of 2021. And on a two-month basis, the sentiment showed that its largest increase since 1991, uh, that was uh, per Joanne Sue, the uh, survey's director. So this consumer sentiment is is now a part of one of the it's one of those measurables out there that uh, helps us understand a little bit how everyone is feeling right now what are we seeing are we seeing an in you know uh better paychecks or are we you know seeing lower gas prices or you know all those things which you know that's part of it right now is is they feel strongly that there's a drop in gasoline prices and you know solid stock market gains and all those factors people are kind of a little bit more you know paying attention and saying, yeah, I'm feeling good about what's going on right now. What does that mean for you and your portfolio? We'll have to kind of wait and see. It's just interesting to see how sentiment really does, like, it's a predictor of what's happened in the market. Like, when you do these studies, it's like, hey, the market's risen. October was an absolute catastrophe, right? And we were making trades and buying into certain stocks and selling stuff and moving. And and it, it worked out for us. I mean, it was great. But, I mean, from that standpoint... All that consumer sentiment follows, like it literally traces that whole movement. I just thought that was going to be an interesting point. I think the key things, you know, Seth just hit on it, right? Inflation's down, gas is down, people are feeling, you know, a little extra cash in the pocket. Uh, They're able to spend a little more freely. The discretionary side of things is turned up. And, you know, that gets people feeling good. You know, I was surprised to see it was the biggest, you know, two-month increase going all the way back to 1991. I mean, there's been some good markets and good times between here and there. But I think that's probably an expression more of how down people were feeling as kind of we came into that. Uh, It was also interesting that political affiliation isn't really driving any of this. It was, you know, equally responded to by Democrats and Republicans. So I think it's good when the economy as a whole or consumers in particular are just feeling good about things you know, to really jumpstart, you know, free spending and and get things going. I think that's what's going to drive, and it's quoted here again, and I hate this whole thing, but the soft landing, right, that the Fed spoke of is how we we come out of this high interest rate period and avoid a recession. You know, as always, I think that's going to be driven on the back of the American consumer. That's going to do it for us, Money in the News and Money on Tap. 
You can reach us at 855-226-8551 or info at yourmoneyontap.com. You know what? While we're talking about Money on Tap, did you know that you can connect with us at Money on Tap 3D? That's at Instagram. And so you can catch up with the latest episodes. You know, we've kind of got news releases, things that we're doing, things, articles that we're taking a look at, all sorts of information. And uh, it's kind of fun to connect in a different way with you uh, at Instagram. That's Money on Tap 3 D. With that, you know what? This is a season where you need, if you're not, you need to be taking a look and starting to gather some of those tax documents. I'm starting to think about what am I going to be doing in 2024 with my taxes? That's what this whole show is going to be about. And with that, we do have some really awesome people here at Brayshaw Financial Group to support you in collecting that information and coming up with a plan around your taxes and getting them filed correctly. That's one of the things we want to make sure that you are aligning is your taxes with your investing and all things working together. Give us a call at Brayshaw Financial Group, Money on Tap, 855-226-8551, or info at yourmoneyontap.com. Go ahead and just drop in the line there, taxes in that subject line. Let us know. That's where you're wanting to go. We want to connect you with the people here at Brayshaw Financial Group to make a difference in your investing and your and your taxes. All right. Thanks for being with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Seth Crossman with Brayshaw Financial Group. Are you ready to take control of your financial future? Look no further than Brayshaw Financial Group. Our team of experienced advisors is dedicated to helping beginners like you build wealth through smart investing strategies. Visit BrayshawFinancial.com today and start your journey towards financial independence. Brayshaw Financial Group, your partner in wealth creation. We appreciate you listening to Money on Tap with Ben, Seth, and Dan. You can contact us at 855-226-8551 or email us at info at yourmoneyontap.com. And now, more of this week's program. Welcome back. You're listening to Money on Tap. You can reach us at 855-226-8551 or info at yourmoneyontap.com. Um, a lot of fun stuff here on board with Money on Tap. One of the ways that we want to appreciate you is when you connect with us at our podcast, just go to any podcast venue. Uh, go to our website, uh, yourmoneyontap.com, and we've got links there for you to either just listen to a podcast uh, as you do that. One of the things we want to just thank you for is subscribing. When you subscribe and you leave us a, a review, we're going to send you out some Money on Tap gear. We've got lots of fun stuff we've got here for you at Money on Tap with the uh, with the group. And uh, just it's, it's so fun to connect with you that way. So we want to appreciate you for doing that, subscribing to the podcast and leaving us a review. And if you do, let us know. Send us a, a note at info at yourmoneyontap.com, and we'll get you out some Money on Tap gear. With that, we are in our tax prep season here, and uh, we do have people at Brayshaw Financial Group. If you're not familiar with who we are, if you're kind of like, who's Ben and Dan and Seth? Well, we're all financial planners, and uh, with Brayshaw Financial Group, we love doing this podcast and radio show for you. But at Brayshaw Financial Group, we really focus on what's called three-dimensional investing. And that brings in you know, the tax professionals and tax preparers to make sure that piece is getting taken care of correctly. And we want to offer those services to you here, whether you're a client or not. You don't have to be a client of Brayshaw Financial Group. It's just a, a service that we extend to our, our listeners and our community. Connect with us and make sure that you're getting the right pieces in place for your taxes to hopefully be saving some money in those, but also doing some planning. Maybe you are, you know, a lot of the time in, in tax preparation, all that somebody that's in on that side of the, the table hears about is, I want to save money, I want to save money. Of course, yes, we want you to as well. In planning, however, if you, let's say you have some goals out there, it's important for them to know, okay, to be able to set you up correctly 
to put the pieces in place that you need in order to accomplish some of those goals. It might be buying a new house. It might be buying a second home, investment properties. Those are some of the main, just the easy ones for us to talk about because we see that a lot where people are just like, you know, saving money, saving money on their taxes, but then they forget that they need to qualify for, you know, some financing over here for, you know, some project or there's other things like that as well. But as we have those conversations around goals and, you know, who you are and what you're looking to try to accomplish, that opens up new channels for us to start to make sure that the pieces align, that you are, that your needs are truly getting met. And, um, Listening to you, that's one of the things we continue to do here at Brayshaw Financial Group is just listen to you and hear what's important. And this has been a, 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 it's a part of our practice as financial planners to integrate these pieces with your preparers. But so many people just don't even really have those people or access to those people. So we've now created and made sure that those are available to you with Brayshaw Financial Group. And... Um, and it's a really exciting thing for us to be able to help on board with you here at Brayshaw Financial and Money on Tap. And with that, we're going to get into some meat and potatoes. It's some of the new stuff that uh, we want to make sure that you're making, that you are aware of as you're starting to gather these documents and think through the parts and the pieces. We're going to start moving through, you know, what's going on? What is the IRS giving us as far as, you know, uh, new, new, um, opportunities or some of the changes. So let's go. You know, Seth, you make a really good, a couple good, I mean, you make some great points. I mean, the idea that taxes are kind of a secondary thought for a lot of our community is in, in society in general, it's, it's like, I don't want to talk about taxes because the more I talk about taxes, the more I have to think about the taxes I have to pay. So therefore I'd rather just put that on the back burner because it really makes me feel uncomfortable. And the thing is, is you know, we all have to pay our fair share, but the government's made those rules. And I'm excited because I know Dan's going to first open up with some stuff here with the IRS and what's going on there to make life easier with the taxes. But I think ultimately, it's kind of like a bad memory. If you, if you just think about it enough and just get it out there and just deal with it, it's not as bad after that. And I think ripping the Band-Aid off is what this, this show is going to be a little bit about. Yeah, I mean, the, the IRS has, has expanded its resources for us to make, you know, access to, to tax help easier and, and more readily available online and in person. So we're going to get into some of that. Um, you know, obviously, I think they're just making it easier for them to get paid and, and collect their dues. But um, either way, that's that's coming. That's a reality of our existence. You know, if, if you earn a living and make money, and whether that's through investments or otherwise, chances are you've got some tax obligations to deal with. So – Kind of the, the the simpler end of the news is you know the the dates involved. So tax season opens up January twenty ninth, twenty twenty four. So that's when you can begin submitting filings that will actually be viewed and and the IRS will be in position to start moving through this tax season. Uh, the deadline date is April fifteenth, as usual. But for our listeners in Maine and Massachusetts, it's actually extended April seventeenth. So important to keep that in mind to get a couple extra days to to get that in. But that's just on on filing your taxes, right? If, if, if you want to file for an extension, you can do so. You have through October to, to get that done. But if there's a payment due or you expect there's a payment due, the deadline to make that payment remains either April 15th or 17th if you're in Mass or Maine. Uh, and if you don't make that payment, you know, interest and penalties begin accruing on that date. So to keep that in mind. But some of the things that have been kind of newly introduced by the IRS you know, for this year and kind of an ongoing fashion is that they've opened up these taxpayer assistance centers. So there's going to be some walk-in resources available throughout the country where, you know, if you're less comfortable working online, you want to sit down with somebody, you'll have an opportunity to do so. Conversely, if you'd like to do it online, there is a, a help center, like a resource called the ITA that you can access and ask some simple questions to. They're not going to walk you through a filing of a return but if you're trying to determine, you know, who's a dependent, what's deductible, some kind of simpler, kind of higher, you know, high level questions, they'll be able to address that for you. But I think one thing that is a little bit exciting and interesting is is they are beginning to roll out, and it's available kind of on a per state basis, uh, the ability to file for free direct with the IRS. So you can get online and file your taxes directly through the IRS at no cost. So that's that's a major enhancement for people who 
who like to do their own taxes and are comfortable um, doing that process or you know don't want to pay a filer to take that extra step for you, you know, that tool's been opened up and, and is available. Uh, so that's something to take advantage of for sure. You know, Dan, I, I think one of the things that, you know, I would just tell, you know, our audience and, and the people, you know, kind of going through the decision making of whether I'm going to file my own online with the IRS. I know that they did, was it last year? I think they did a test pilot of this program mm-hmm. and so forth. That, yeah, exactly. And so, and this year it's active. I think the thing is, is there's going to be a lot of people who try to do this and there's going to be some missing components to your specific solution. I mean, I think that's why the the tax code is, you know, libraries full of information because there's so many different ways to do taxes depending on your situation, your needs. And we're going to go through a lot of these things. But, you know, when you go to these centers, there's not a whole heck of a lot of advice. You know, I mean, unfortunately, it's a, uh, yes, this is how this works, but they can't tell you based on your situation exactly the very best thing to do. That's why there are people who take huge tests <laughs> called the CPA test to give you that advice. And I think we're going to have a bunch of centers who people are going to know how to use the technology, but they're not going to know how to help you do your taxes per se in a way that may be the most advantageous. I only say that to our listeners, not to scare you into working with a tax preparer, but if your taxes are, you know, more than just a W-2 from work and you've got some kind of, you know, unforeseen situations, you've got dependents, you've got, Maybe there's education involved, you've done charitable work, uh, or you have charitable contributions, or you know you have your own little side business, or you have a, your own business at all. Like a lot of these you know, things that we're mentioning, and this is just the beginning, as soon as you start adding any of that stuff, probably finding a simple tax preparer begins, you know, becomes your next step. And then after that, you're going to need a CPA, because I, I, I appreciate the government coming out there and, and saying, hey, listen, we're going to provide other services so that everyone can file in a more reasonable way. But unless you are ABC simple, most of the time there's a lot of ways to cut this cake, and you want to make sure you're doing it what's most advantageous for you for a lot of different reasons. All right. Well, if you have not picked up on this yet, one of the things that you – have an opportunity to do with us here at Money on Tap and Brayshaw Financial Group is connect with some really great tax preparers, CPAs. And um, one of the things we just want to make sure that you have access to is people that are knowledgeable, skillful, in not only doing this work of getting this season in order for you and filed for you correctly, but also get you prepared and planned for this 2024, 25, 26, because guess what? Those those years are going to roll down, uh, roll around the corner as well. And you're going to want to have some people in your corner that really have done a great job taking care of you. So connect with us here at Brayshaw Financial Group and Money on Tap at 855-226-8551 or info at yourmoneyontap.com. Just put in the subject line, tax, and that helps us know where we need to, what we need to connect you with here at Brayshaw Financial Group. We're going to take a quick break. Now, when we come back, we have 2023 deductions and credits and things that you can still take and just take advantage of. Be aware of. Make sure that they're included in your process to get through this filing of 2023 and uh, be successful. Be successful in filing your taxes. Be successful in your investing. That's what we talk about here at Money on Tap a lot. All right. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, Dan Mickelon here with Brayshaw Financial. Looking for a hassle-free way to invest? Look no further than Brayshaw Financial Group. With Brayshaw Financial Group, you can start investing with as little as $100, enjoy a user-friendly platform with a diverse range of investment options. Visit Brayshaw Financial Group and start your investment journey today. Brayshaw Financial Group, investing made easy. You can reach us at 855-226-8551 or email us at info at yourmoneyontap.com. And now, more Money on Tap with Ben, Seth, and Dan. Welcome back. You're listening to Money on Tap. You can reach us at 855-226-8551 or info at yourmoneyontap.com. Money on Tap 
3D, at Money on Tap 3D. That's where you can connect with us at Instagram and receive updates on shows, articles that we're reviewing and discussing. Um, what's up next on Money on Tap? And with that, I want to encourage you to go to the podcast venue and have a listen to this show, the last show, the next show. Either way, subscribe and drop us a line at info at yourmoneyontap.com. Let us know you subscribed, left a, a review, and we've got Money on Tap gear that we want to send you, and uh, it's pretty, it's good-looking stuff. I'm a little biased. I am, but I love it. I look at it and got to say my... Uh, my family loves it too. It's uh, we're a lot of fun around the holidays, so they always know they're going to get some really cool stuff from us, and and uh, we have fun with that. You can be a part of that when you go and you subscribe to Money on Tap, and we want to just recognize you and thank you for being here as a part of our community uh, and being successful in your investing. So we've got lots to talk about still, and of course we've got only so much time. And so with that, let's get into it with you. Start saving you some money on your taxes, guys. You know, the reason we did a two-part show is because taxes could be a thousand-part show. So we're trying to break this down into something that's really manageable for a lot of our listeners. And, you know, for a lot of people, you know, probably one of the most obvious deductions if you have children is your child tax credit, right? I mean, that is like one major thing. So... Before we get into all of that, like let's talk about what the difference is between a deduction and a credit, because I think a lot of people are confused. Like a deduction is something you actually get to deduct from your income, which means that it reduces your income when the IRS then does the tax computation. What a credit is, after the IRS says you owe this much, a credit actually reduces the amount you owe, which you know, credits, even though they might sound small, might actually be very, very large based on how much income you have. So it's important to understand the difference between deductions and credits. So when we go into these first conversations about a child tax credit, which means it's going to reduce the amount of taxes you owe, I think it's really, really important. The deduction comes off the top line, you know, so that whatever the remainder is that you had an offset against is still going to be taxable to you at your tax bracket. But a credit comes off that bottom line, that number that you owe, and it is, in fact, refundable to you, which is the one difference you didn't hit there, Ben. I just want to make sure. Maybe I missed it. But that could be money coming back to you, landing directly in your pocket. And that's absolutely true. And there are things, I mean, just, you know, and we can get into a lot of detail, too. There are some credits that are not refundable. Um, so not everyone is if the government ends up owing you money. So that's important to to be in that place. But the child tax credit is not one of those, which is great. But I think the thing is, you know, Dan, I got to give you credit because you're the one that pointed it out. So and I'm going to take your thunder. When it comes to the child tax credit, for a lot of people, they don't realize it's there's a child and a dependent care credit. So, for instance, in 2024, you can get up to $2,000 credit per child but if you have a, a dependent that's not necessarily your child, which could be a spouse or you know, a parent that you're caring for, you can get a credit for quite a bit of money. It's actually up to 35% of $3,000. So that's about a $1,000 credit, which you know, if you're in a 20% bracket, that's a $5,000 equivalent deduction on the IRS channel. It could be equivalent to a $10,000 deduction if you're in the 10% tax piece. So up to $1,000 credit is a pretty phenomenal deduction. And it can be up to $6,000 if you have two or more um, dependents, such as like a spouse and a parent or both of your parents or, God forbid, all four of your, your parents, your parents and your in-laws. I mean, that would just, yeah, the math goes it gets pretty scary there. But it's important for you to understand that it's not just limited to your kids. It's actually for dependents outside of your children. Yeah, that's a big one to note. And there's a lot of um, situations where we find ourselves taking care of elderly relatives. And so if, if that's a situation you find yourself in, make sure you get all of that credit available to you because that's uh, not only a, a massive undertaking emotionally and physically, but financially as well. So don't sell yourself short on that. A couple other credits or a lifetime learning credit is one worth taking a look at here. It allows you to claim 20% of the first 10000 you paid towards tuition and fees for educational expenses. So I think this is important and it's similar to an American Opportunity Tax Credit 
which is shortened AOC, and we were, we were laughing about that a minute ago. Not a lot of <laughs> AOC favored deductions in the tax code, but this is one of them. But that allows you to deduct the first 2000 you spent on tuition, books, equipment, and school fees. But in both of these cases, living expenses, room and board, and transportation don't apply. So if you, are, if you do find yourself in an educational experience taking on some cost, be sure you're taking a good hard look at, at these opportunities to get some deductions for yourself. And I think, Dan, you make a good point. I think the disparity in the difference between these two is the fact that the lifetime learning credit is limited – essentially to tuition and fees where the American Opportunity Tax Credit, yeah, you can use it towards tuition, books, but it's equipment too. So, I mean, that could be like a laptop or, you know, whatever it is that you need to accomplish that. It definitely has a broader range than just the tuition uh, and, and fees scenario. I think one of the points here to make is that there are a lot of little intricacies in these tax codes, and I know that scares a lot of people, but it's important for you to hear because we have people that, you know, that handle taxes in our office. We have relationships with CPAs if you want to work with somebody specifically direct. You know, like there's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but if you don't embrace some of these things, and even though there's little intricacies, you might be missing some stuff, right? I mean, there are people that miss the dependent care credit. There's people who miss you know, the American Opportunity Tax Credit, because they might not be going to to school, but they might need some equipment, you know, for some sort of portion of their life or business to help them, you know, further on. And, and there's just, there's opportunities out there. And a lot of people just don't know these little things. And they can, they can be huge thousands of dollars of benefits. Maybe you get $3,000 back, great. But what if it was six? What if it was 10? You know, I mean, that's where we really want to get people engaged. Yeah, I was going to say that there's um, a lot of people out there right now that are receiving letters from their CPAs. They have had long-standing relationships with great tax people, um, and they're receiving a letter that says, we thank you for, and we're sad to announce that we are going to go ahead and be going a different direction. There's a lot of CPAs out there right now and tax preparers right now that are just rolling it up. They're done. You know, they're closing their practice. Mm -hmm. They've aged out. And there hasn't been this um, population coming in behind them to fill those gaps and to replace those positions. And so there's been a lot of consolidation where uh, if you don't happen to have a certain amount of or an asset level – you're not going to find a CPA very readily. There's just not a lot, a lot of young CPAs out there. There's not a lot of young tax preparers out there. So um, we, I just want to prepare you for that, that uh, if you've gotten one of those letters, first of all, we're sorry. We really are. We hope that um, you know we're able to help you here at Brayshaw Financial Group by providing those relationships that we've created and we uh, trust and we work with on a regular basis just to make sure that you have somebody in your corner that's looking over your shoulder and taking care of you to make sure that those parts and those pieces are getting done the right way. Um, and, you know, also as well, there's a lot of the time people just get to a point where they they don't know what they don't know. And that's one of the beginning of wisdom is just recognizing I don't know this information and I need somebody to help me out. So a couple of great opportunities for you if that's you Connect with us here at Brayshaw Financial Group and uh, make sure that we get you in the right seats to get you taken care of. Um, we don't want anybody to get left behind and try to, you know, have to figure this all out on their own and miss some of the opportunities that we're talking about or, you know, just complete, you know, it's it can be a pretty complex world. So we want to make sure that those parts are getting taken care of for you. Seth, um, with- Seth, really real quick point. We, all of what you just said is the reason the IRS has created this free scenario for you to file because they're just they realize that you well, know I a lot Dan of, said it was because they want to get their money <laughs> well that too but they so. realize that you know if it's too complicated too hard and you just can't do it like they're realizing that the number of professionals is getting limited so there's going to be a bottleneck at some point and they're trying to combat that and, and try to help so I, I do think i mean i hate to say irs is trying to help but um i didn't say that i just want to clarify i did not say <laughs> irs is trying to help <laughs> There is a problem, and the IRS is trying to step into the middle of the median here to funnel more money out of your pocket. So that's what they're trying to do. 
<laughs> but I think it's interesting. So, All right. Well, you're listening to Money on Tap. And uh, we're going to get into more credits and deductions with you, but right after we take a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Money on Tap. Are you looking for professional guidance to kickstart your investing journey? Look no further. Brayshaw Financial Group and our planners are here to help. Our team of experts will provide personalized advice tailored to your financial goals. Visit BrayshawFinancial.com today to schedule your free consultation. Brayshaw Financial, investing made easy. We appreciate you listening to Money on Tap with Ben, Seth, and Dan. You can contact us at 855-226-8551 or email us at info at yourmoneyontap.com. And now, more of this week's program. Welcome back. You're listening to Money on Tap. You can reach us at 855-226-8551 or info at yourmoneyontap.com. We're talking about taxes, learning more, and paying less. And with that, why not? If you're on Instagram, go ahead to at money on tap 3D. That's us. And lots of fun stuff there for you on our Instagram page. And I'd love to connect with you there as well. So we are going to get close to the end of the show here and have to kind of push through a few things. So pardon me if I don't get too long on talking about what some of these credits or deductions are, but we're going to get through it. I promise. So with that, we've got a student loan interest deduction and the student loan interest deduction lets borrowers write off up to 2,500 from taxable income if they paid interest on their student loans. And that's great. You know, being able to write off 2,500 on your income is really, really beneficial for people that have, you know, accumulated student loans and now are, you know, in the workforce and needing a little bit of help. And the adoption credit is is one that we wanted to bring up really because it it doesn't get a whole lot of coverage. And there's a lot more people that are in this consideration around having adoption. While there's some help for you there, the adoption credit is a non-refundable tax break that helps taxpayers cover a certain amount of qualified adoption costs per child. So the credit begins to incrementally decrease at certain income levels and then completely phases out once your modified adjust gross income exceeds a given threshold for the tax uh, year. And that modified adjusted gross income is basically some um, uh, there's there's some deductions applied and some penalties applied with that that just uh, bring you into that modified adjusted gross income level. And that's what they are running this number from. So for 2023, the credit max is out at 15950 uh, The credit's phased out at that modified adjusted gross income of two hundred, roughly $280,000. So that's a really significant benefit for people who are going through really a very expensive process in adoption and a necessary one. Um, and I love highlighting that there is some, there's some relief there for people and their taxes as they're, you know, entering into or uh, adding to their family and parented and really just, you know, God bless you. I love, I love seeing people uh, in families thrive and that kind of help is so cool to see in our tax code. You know, there's a lot of moving parts here with, you know, the adoption credit, the student credits, the educational credits, um, the dependent credits, the child credits, you know, um, you know, credits are, are a wonderful thing. And um, usually when you're getting a credit, it's something that the government recognizes is in betterment of you, someone else, or the world around you. So um, I, I think that's where credits, you know, again, as you know, we explained earlier, is a direct correlation to how much you owe or how much you get back most of the time. So if you're going to owe $10,000, a credit is literally going to reduce that number dollar for dollar. Super important thing for you to understand the difference between a deduction and a credit. And it's important for you to know that because, you know, even though some of these credits sound small, they compute into significantly larger equivalent deductions that you might have when people come to making like IRA contributions and all sorts of different stuff, right? And it's like, 
those are all deductions. And you'd have to do sometimes, you know, 10 times the number of of some sort of contribution just to get the same equal number as a credit in some cases. And so it's important for people to understand that. And I, I think a lot of our listeners probably aren't even aware. They're like, oh, yeah, I get a deduction or a credit or something. It's It's good for me. But it's really important to focus on these credit pieces because there's so many more of these. There's a plethora of credit options out there in a range of, of various scenarios from almost anything that you can possibly do. And these things can really impact you financially quite a bit. And in, in today's world where eggs cost seven or eight bucks a dozen and milk is five bucks a gallon or, you know, I mean, just crazy numbers out there that we're paying. This can mean a lot to you. And it's really important that you embrace it. And we have people in our office that do taxes at a significantly reasonable price Give us a call. I would really encourage that. I'm going to pass this over to Dan. Yeah, I mean, I think that integration between your planner and your tax professional, we hit on it earlier, but it's it's a really important, valuable tool. You know, just simply because it makes the communication easier and there's a general awareness of your overall financial picture when you when you consolidate those things into a single place. So, yeah, I would, I would say in, in conjunction with the resources the IRS is making available to you, take advantage of the resources that – you know, a, a place like Brayshaw Financial can provide you as well to make sure you're maximizing this experience and getting the most out of this opportunity, you know, to pay less, save more, and, and be as efficient as possible in your tax planning. It's all very important. And another deduction available to hit on before, before we kind of close out is the medical expense deduction. If your medical expenses exceed 7.5% of your adjusted gross income, and these are expenses that have not been reimbursed by an insurer or anything like that, uh, you'll have some deductions available to you as well. So again, if you are, find yourself where you're back in the education experience you know, for yourself, if you're caring for children or caring for elders, taking on medical expenses, you've adopted a child, you know, these are all instances where you know, the IRS, the American government is willing to you know, invest in you and give you some relief because of the things that you're doing to better the world around you. So, you know, take advantage of that. And, and if you find yourself in any of those categories, you know, kudos to you for for being, you know, willing to accept these challenges and, and be out there and, and be concerned about others around you as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it, you know, understanding like the medical piece is really, really important. Um, but when it comes to that, it's not just it's not just those types of pieces. The next things that we're going to cover, and these are the last two, um, is the deduction of your state and local taxes. You know, you can deduct deduct up to ten thousand dollars if you're uh, married and filing jointly, or five thousand dollars if you're filing separately, of your property taxes and state or local income or sales tax. That's a lot. A lot of people don't take care of this. I mean, like in New Hampshire, it's not a big conversation because you know, we don't have sales tax for the most part. But a lot of this stuff is totally deductible, which is pretty incredible. And then your mortgage interest deduction, which is probably the most captured, you know, thing, you know, in the it, by tax preparers is the mortgage interest. But it's still something to double check. It's still something to make sure because if they're not asking you for your, you know, your your financials on your on your property or your home, it's like that's a problem. And uh, and something that's not always caught. That's going to do it for us and Money on Tap. We have been talking about taxes, learning more and paying less. And, yeah, hopefully there's been some really good information in here for you that applies and you're able to take into this season and start really start kind of taking some notes on the parts that you that apply to you that you just – you haven't really picked up or or have some questions on, give us a call at 855-226-8551 or info at yourmoneyontap.com. And uh, love to connect you with our tax professionals here at Brayshaw Financial Group at Money on Tap. And make sure that you are really, truly in the driver's seat and successful in this season of taxes and the outcomes that you have here for you in this uh through the taxes as well as through your financial planning journey we really want to focus on you being successful in your investing huge part of it is this tax part uh this tax piece again connect with us send us an email at info at your money on tap .com. put taxes in the subject we'll make sure that you're connected with the right people to help make sure that you are uh getting through the season 
successfully. Thanks for joining us today, and we cannot wait to be here with you next week. You've been listening to Money on Tap. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of this radio station and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. No strategy, product, material, or tool mentioned can assure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information, products, materials, or tools mentioned should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. This show may be subsidized in whole or in part by a product sponsor or issuer. Securities and advisory services offered through SagePoint Financial Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC, and a registered investment advisor. All other services offered through Brayshaw Financial Group, LLC, are independent of SagePoint Financial. SagePoint Financial and Brayshaw Financial Group do not provide tax or legal advice. Main office is located at 116 South River Road, Bedford, New Hampshire. 03110 and can be reached at toll free 855 226 8551.